Hello YouTube, it's Olivia Nance here. I am sorry I haven't got a video up in ages, but it's because I've been working and any videos that I have been doing, I've been thinking that my reviews have been rubbish. So hopefully this one should be good and it'll be up. Anyway, I'm very pleased with myself. You probably can't see it because it's all dark and it's really thanks to a stupid light that busted itself and now it's on a 40 watt bulb rather than a 60 watt. And also my um, light up there hasn't worked in like a year or something. Anyway, um, I don't know if you can see that. Um, up here. I like to show you this in the day, probably in the end. But yeah, that I basically reorganised my bookshelf. So now I've got two extra shelves free um, to put all my stuff in. Um, which is pretty cool because I was running out of room and um, considering all the books, uh, book series I want to buy and such, it's going to get pretty packed. Um. I've managed to put my Harry Potter books back onto the bottom shelf after they missing my wardrobe for you or something. And I was looking at them this morning, I was thinking, they're really, really damaged. They really are damaged. Apart from the last two of them, I've got some serious damage. Especially the first one, that one is seriously dead. Um, it's the second edition, um, with the stars on the front. Um, okay, so we're gonna do the book in a minute. i just like to show you these books that I've managed to grab myself hold of. So, it's essentially a mini mini haul. Oh, it's just a couple of books. Okay, so um, a few weeks ago, uh, my sister she got rid of some books she wanted to get rid of because we were like sorting out our room like crazy. And I picked up and said, "Can I have this? It's um, here there be dragons. It's the first one in a series. It's by James A. Owen, and it's the Chronicles of the Imaginarium Geographica. And basically, um." It's about um, this, these uh, two boys, I think, and they have to go and find. They have to go somewhere because um, they've got hold of this book called the Imaginarium Geographica. And um, they're chased by this half man, half werewolf called Wendigo. It sounds very, very good. I'll probably do a review of it because I haven't. I don't know how well known this is, but anyway, it's the first in a series, so I'll have to buy the other one through and I read that. And the other one I got hold of in a um, uh, closing down sale was um, this. It was over the summer. Um, it's The Pain Merchants, The Healing Wars, book one. There's two books out of this books in this series um but what makes no sense is they've picked massive pages they've left loads of space but anyway they redid it so um the pages are now much smaller than other books oh oh i've just realized something this is a first edition it says one on here wow i don't think you can see that but i was just thinking is this the first edition um i can't really see that can you see that little one? Can't see the. Yeah, can you see that little one? Yeah, it's first edition. Wow, I never realised that. So yeah, that. Those are two books. It's like a mini mini wall. Um. I have asked for twelve books for Christmas. I think it's twelve. I have to check. It's either twelve or nine. Fingers crossed I'll get all of them. And then I look all sunburned now. Thank you very much, stupid computer. Um, then uh, I'll be able to show you all the books I ordered. I shall not tell you which ones I've ordered, but I will say this. Um, I have asked for Department 19, which sounds so awesome. Um, I've also asked for the Person Night Angel Trilogy. Um, Way of Shadows, that's by Brent Weeks, like assassins and such. I will definitely do a review for that when I get it and such. Okay, so the book we're going to be doing today is um, Dark Matter. It's, uh, it's called Dark Matter, a ghost story by Michelle Paver. Now, this was published last year. Um, 
and it's 12.99 in the UK only. I know it's an audio. Um and it's published by Orion and I really love Orion because they've got this um awesome thing but with a dog and stuff that only appears on the adult books. The kids books have got like really boring words with Orion on and such. Okay, so the um it is Okay, see, 243 pages long, so it's not that thick at all. Um, and the print is a nice size, it's average size. So yeah. It's written as diary entry, so it's in first person, but there's also a letter at the beginning, which is written by one of the other characters, and towards the end it's also written in present first person. Um, because of how things turn out. Um, what I really like about this book is that rather than having a blank inside, it has this, um, which is essentially, I think it's meant to be the view from the hut um, at night, what becomes eternal night there. So it's all very snowy and very cold and very arctic -y. Um I'll just point something out now. This on the front here, I had no idea what this was for ages. You know, I was like, why? What is that? Um, I knew it was a skeleton, of course. Well, I, couldn't even, I didn't even realise it was a skeleton. I think I thought it was, like, skis. Ice skis. It's actually um, the whale. There's this whale skeleton in the book. At the place where they say, that is it. That's just the whale skeleton. Okay, so. Uh, the blur. What is it? What does it want? Why is it angry with me? January 1937, clouds of war are gathering over a fog-bound London. 28-year-old Jack is poor, lonely and desperate to change his life. So when he's offered the chance to be the wireless operator on an Arctic expedition, he jumps at it. Spirits are high as the ship leaves Norway, five men and eight huskies crossing the Baronets, the Bar the Barents Sea by the light of the midnight sun. At last they reach the remote uninhabited bay where they will camp for the next year. Hooking, but the Arctic summer is brief. As night returns to claim the land, Jack feels a creeping unease. One by one, his companions are forced to leave. He faces a stark choice: stay or go. Soon he will see the last of the sun as the polar night engulfs the camp in months of darkness. Soon he will reach the point of no return, when the sea will freeze and making escape making escape impossible. And Hooking is not uninhabited. Jack is not alone. Something walks there in the dark. Now, um. It is a very, very good book. This is um, practically the only ghost story I've read. And basically, it's been so well written. Um, if you've read Michelle Paver's Chronicles of Ancient Artists, you will know her skill in describing stuff and generally really grabbing you into a scene. Um, she doesn't fail on here. And because it's an adult book, it's slightly more descriptive, maybe use a bit more interesting words. But, um, yeah, the, the, it was really, really well written because as it drew to close, um, the book was generally making me feel sick because um, I got so scared. Um, I mean, I only get like sick, scared like that when it's really scary. I mean, when I watch them. Uh, the Empty Child and the Doctor Dances. It's the Doctor Dances. Um, I felt sick when I was watching the end of that. So this again is quite scary. Um, it took me a little while to get through because um, it wasn't the sort of thing I usually read. I don't think. And also because it's an adult book, and I find adult books sometimes a little bit hard to get through. But what I really liked in it was um, just what made it really interesting was Jack's uh, ability, you know, he was trying to reason what he was hearing, what he was seeing and such. But it was really well written because, you know, the, you only got the presence of um, the ghost, you know, you didn't actually really see what it was and, you know, it, it was just sort of like lurking there and it was really really good and um i got pretty scared because um i was a little bit apprehensive about 
like turning out the light when I'm just reading it at night. I mean, how sensible is that? So yeah, um, I'd say if you were looking for a um, something that's not too long and a good read and something good for winter, you know, get this. And I would seriously say that um, if you can't be to read, go and listen to this on tape because it would be just as atmospheric, you know. It would be a very, very good read. Um, yeah, I... It was just beautifully written and I would recommend it to anyone. It's not that hard reading if you're if you want to try out adult books actually. This isn't as wordy as some books are. Because some adult books are so wordy I kind of my brain melts. So um Dark Matter is definitely a much more easy going adult read and I would generally say, you know, if you're a young adult, you know, you're a teenager and you want to start reading adult books, this would be a good book to start with. Um I don't know what Michelle's other adult books are like. I probably won't read them because they're romances and they're historical. All her books are like historical. But, um, uh, they're probably written to around them at the same quality and everything, and it's a very, very good read. So, um, I would say, you know. If you're looking for a good one, just pick this up. Um, uh, let me just check something. No, I'm. I have no idea whether this is a first edition, but I remember it took forever to come in the post because I ordered it from Waterstones, and I was like, Waterstones, you are seriously the worst place to order from. So yeah, they do actually take quite a while to come from Waterstones. But um, yeah, this is a a good read it's one of the few adult books I've read so yeah um, well, it's a very very good read um, very enjoyable okay and the other thing I wanted to say is quite embarrassing but I'll say it anyway um I was reading this last night um, I'm gonna finish it today because I've got like a hundred or so pages to go I was reading it and um, as you can see the, the, the spine's pretty Sorry, the spine's pretty flappy. You think, oh, oh, right, okay, yeah. Yeah, I would. I just had it up, and suddenly, one hundred and something pages just flop out. Um, <laughs> it's just, it was just so. I was like, oh my god. So, um, hopefully, I'll just be able to like sneak that back in, like this. I mean some of the books in there are pretty damaged so I may take some money to the library and say this accidentally ripped here's some money for a new copy oh yeah but this is a very well used copy it's been like out since 2006 so many times you have to use two thingies but yeah um yes I do read Charlie Bone I know I'm 17 and I read Charlie Bone <laughs> um this is because I find that um some like preteen and children's series are actually better than some YA because what I like about kids series is um, they focus more on the friendship and the trust and the general action and then YA is just this annoying romance and um, I'm not sure how many boy YA's there are out there or like unisex YA's there are out there so it's pretty hard to find me a YA um, okay so I think that's all um, I'm going to be probably reviewing, um, I'm not sure, maybe Shadow Magic next, or Alien, uh, I've been meaning to review that and it kept on fudging up my review, so I'll do Alien probably next. And I also am planning to do Ingo at some point. So, there we go. Um, that's all. Uh, bye. I will see you whenever I have got time. Hopefully soonish. Um, yeah. Bye.